So as we all know, the thyroid gland, which is um, located in our necks, it's kind of butterfly shape, um, has a major role in all, like all hormones have you know, multiple roles, but some of the key aspects of thyroid are temperature control. You know, um, if you if you know people or yourself and you have cold hands and feet regularly, you could have a thyroid problem, mm -hmm. sleeping problems, depression problems. And of course, carrying too much weight. Everyone, you know, everyone says, oh, I've a thyroid problem. I'm, I'm too fat, whatever, because it is part of metabolism, of course, as well. Mm. And so there are actually four hormones produced by the thyroid gland, uh, although T1 and T4, as they're known, are hardly ever spoken about. And most doctors will only talk about T3 and T4. Um, <clears throat> we could go off into that, but to keep it into the uh, into this peptide situation, most people, most adults, I should say, are slightly hypothyroid. In other words, they're they're not producing enough thyroid hormones. Okay, there was a great doctor by the name of Broder Barnes who wrote a book many years ago called Hypothyroidism: The Undiagnosed Epidemic. And he estimated that something like 40 to 50 percent of adults were deficient in their thyroid. OK, now that gentleman is long dead, unfortunately, but his um, student who is alive very much today, a lovely man by the name of Rick Wilkinson. And I've interviewed Rick and 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 he's um, written articles that have appeared in our Aging Matters magazine. And. He asked him, and I asked him, you know, it was 40 to 50 percent, you know, all those years ago with Broder. What do you think it is today? And he said it's more. So mm -hmm. it hasn't got better. It's got worse. Well, definitely. So, so there we are. So <clears throat> so how do we improve our thyroid? Well, we can all find out how well our thyroid is functioning by taking our temperature when we get up first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Don't take it as gospel on the first one. But if you do it, say, every day over 10 days. Have a look at the number that comes up the most and you'll be gobsmacked how accurate it is. And it, it, I can only talk in Celsius. Somebody else had to work it out in Fahrenheit. But you should be first thing in the morning, get out of bed, get the get the thermometer, put it on the forehead, stick it in the ear as you do now. Um, you should be 36.3 to 36.7. If mm. that's your normal number, congratulations, you've got a nice active thyroid. But a lot of people are going to be gobsmacked that they're 36.2, 36.1, 36, possibly even 35 point something. It, mm. but, it doesn't, but the thyroid is so pin accurate, we are talking about point something of a degree. OK, yes. yeah. uh, that's how clever the thyroid is uh, trying to maintain temperature. Um, and so by taking the um, thymus peptide, you are going to reinvigorate, you're going to activate a gene and you're going to your body is going to naturally start producing more thyroid hormones okay and you're going to be able to follow that by continuing to monitor your rising from bed temperature and suddenly over some days maybe a few weeks in some cases you're going to see it creep up from 36.2 to 36.3 and maybe 36.4 but it's going to just creep but to get you in to mm. this band so it's not like taking a thyroid hormone mm. where if you swallow a thyroid hormone, you're going to put that thyroid in your blood. And therefore, it is important that you monitor the amount of thyroid you have circulating in you, because if you were blasé to it and just didn't have a control, you run the risk of what's called down regulation, which means that your own thyroid gland may stop making thyroid because you say it's it's in abundance. What on earth do we need to do this anymore for? Mm. And that can happen. So one doesn't do that. But the peptides don't work like that. And this is the strangest thing about them, that, that it's not clear why they do this. But let, let's remember, this is the message in food. So it's something that we've evolved with, OK, um, over over probably millions of years. If it raises the thyroid just to keep the thyroid if it raises the thyroid to within this parameter it won't allow it to to keep going to some stupid temperature like 38 or 30 it actually would stop at some point and, and then silence the gene because the gene is either on or off there's no middle ground it, it's either silenced or it's activated and so by 
a process I don't think that's really understood even by the Russians who've been researching it for 40 years. It actually bioregulates. So here, here's the weird thing, right? If you were one of the few people that's hyperthyroid, in other mm. words, your body temperature is over 36.7 and you've got too much thyroid circulating in you, mm -hmm. it silences the gene and brings you back down. Wow, that's amazing. And it could explain why in over a million dose cases that the, that the I should say the Soviets, because this started when they were the Soviet Union. And of course, this is not just Russia. We are talking about Azerbaijan and uh, uh, you know um, Kazakhstan and Ukraine and the other Russian speaking countries here okay mm -hmm. Georgia, Armenia etc this is not just Russia because it was the Soviet Union mm -hmm. um, that they have not to date seen one serious side effect not one wow that's that's great yeah brilliant okay yeah. so just to clarify um, if someone has been taking I don't know thyroxine mm -hmm. um, would they would they need to stop taking that to take the peptide for the thyroid or could they take both simultaneously? Could somebody take um, the peptide for thyroid and carry on with their iodine or selenium supplementation? What would be the correct protocol? Coming to the hormone, to the thyroxine, um, the answer is they can be taken both together with one caveat. And that is that the patient should monitor themselves much more closely because there is every chance that they will need a lower dose of thyroxine. Right, okay. Possibly even don't need it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really does depend on the condition of the patient, the need, etc. There's one time that these peptides will do absolutely nothing for anybody, and that is that the gland or tissue has to be present. So in other words, if, you'd have, if you've had a thyroidectomy, if your thyroid gland's been removed, mm -hmm. then no. you're stuck hormones yeah because it ain't going to do nothing for you okay you need the gland or tissue to be present i know that's a minority but there are people out there with that, mm -hmm. that problem. so the short answer is yes they can be taken together but if you're taking the drug per se monitor yourself closely there's every chance you will need less of that drug possibly even none of it at all but if you're taking uh, say iodine for example i'm less concerned because now we're talking about the building blocks um, and the only thing that you probably would cause a problem is waste your money. Because if, for example, um, the, the thyroid gland, the peptide has done the activation and it's put it, put you in the normal bland, uh, band and the material like iodine, et cetera, has been available because iodine is, is, is required to manufacture the, the T3, T4, et cetera, mm -hmm. thyroid hormones, then maybe, um, there'll come a point where you don't need the peptide anymore. But here's the good news. You don't have to take these peptides every day. In, in fact, the protocol, the typical protocol, is to take them for 10 days every month. Because once you've activated or silenced, it's it's done. Right. You know, it's like, is my fax machine on or off? Mm. You know, it, there's no middle ground. Uh, and then back to check every now and again. So there is a, there is a, there is necessary to do some repetition, and some people do it as little as every three months. So imagine that you have ten days of treatment every three months, but in majority of cases, most people are doing that every month. But right. unlike a drug, also even some supplements, there's certainly no need to take them every day, not unless the condition is serious. Yeah. 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 